hot and I coordinate the Enfield in Bloom campaign with the help of a voluntary committee which is chaired by Eric Morton. We decided to make the video to give everyone a chance to see the borough at its best, especially the elderly and disabled. Our aim is to give an insight into the campaign's activities and all the effort that is involved in making it a success. For more than a decade, the Enfield in Bloom campaign has been brightening up the London Borough of Enfield. Every winter, teams of dedicated volunteers have planted literally thousands of bulbs. Volunteers of all ages help with the bulb planting. Each year, during the winter months, scores of school children clad in wellies and armed with spades take part in the enormous task of bulb planting. Guided by one of Enfield's park rangers, school children learn how to plant bulbs. But it is more than a simple lesson in gardening, as the ranger explains. It stands to reason that if you can show children things of beauty in their environment, then by doing so, you will teach them to respect their habitat, the habitat of the surrounding animals, wildlife, etc. It may show them that they should be more responsible. Uh, if by getting some children to plant some crocus corms, whatever, and they can feel as though they're taking part in the project and it'll encourage them to take care of their environment by doing so, then um, that can't be a bad thing. Another new area of involvement has been the planting of trees. Volunteers from the local conservation group Ground Force have planted trees close to the M25. In years to come, they will provide a natural barrier to the motorway. From humble beginnings back in 1982, the campaign has steadily grown, and every year tackling new and more ambitious projects. The aim behind all of the work has been to enhance the local environment for the benefit of those who live and work in Enfield and of course for those just passing through. Enfield in Bloom was initiated by the eminent horticulturist Roy Hay who founded the National Britain in Bloom competition back in 1964. Roy came to live in the borough when he married. The enthusiastic participation of all sections of the local community has been the key factor of the campaign's success. This support takes many forms, ranging from practical help with gardening to providing the financial support that makes the campaign's ambitious programme viable. Enfield in Bloom is financed largely by fundraising schemes such as the annual draw. For every ticket sold, five daffodil bulbs or 10 crocus corms can be planted. To date, three quarters of a million crocus and one and a half million daffodil bulbs have been planted throughout the borough. Many local businesses have supported and sponsored the campaign over the years. Their continuing generosity, donating a wealth of competition and raffle prizes, enables the campaign to flourish and the work to continue. TV cameras from LWT's Gardening Roadshow programme, presented by Jenny Barnett, came to Enfield. It marked the campaign's 10th anniversary by organising and filming the transformation of Waterfall Road Roundabout in Southgate. After a breathless two days preparation and a further two days filming, the roundabout's metamorphosis was complete. It was landscaped to design by Roddy Llewellyn and Daphne Falsham and a dull grassy mound 
had become an interesting feature incorporating a 10-ton boulder and a magnolia tree in full bloom. The campaign's promotional trailer tours the borough with a photographic display of prize-winning gardens. The mayor, assisted by local school children, released balloons to mark the occasion and then hand out competition entry forms to passers-by to encourage them to enter the current competition. Here, at the council's Going Going Green environmental exhibition, Enfield in Bloom attracted great interest, underlining the important part the campaign plays in the borough's environment policy. Since 1988, the campaign has been spearheaded by a full-time coordinator, Anne Tott. Anne can be seen taking every opportunity to promote Enfield in Bloom at local shows and events. In fact, anywhere crowds of Enfield people are likely to gather. This campaign, unique in bringing together the local council, businesses, voluntary organisations and local residents, may be 10 years old, but it's very much a project for the 1990s and beyond. For a campaign dedicated to making Enfield bloom, this carpet bedding was a fitting 10th anniversary tribute from the council's parks department in Broomfield Park, Palmer's Green. The formal gardens of Forty Hall, one of many stately homes in Enfield, provides the perfect pool of tranquility for visitors. The spring flowers colour the scene mixing with the grandeur of the cedar and the rarity of the mulberry tree. The solitude of the walled garden is contrasted by the extensive countryside where quiet walks provide popular recreation. Every serious garden in Enfield should know of the annual competition for the best front garden and every year an increasing number participate. There are now 12 categories of the competition enabling virtually anyone to enter their plot of land. The competition provides every incentive for a truly spectacular display of summer flowers like the overall prize winners. Mr and Mrs Holland to Prince's Avenue Freezy Water, the overall winners, have also come second in the London in Bloom competition. How do you feel about winning? Well, I think it's unbelievable really. I, I, um, I redone the garden this year as something different and I was, I was, well, I was amazed really that I did get anywhere. I was very surprised and pleased of course. Yeah. Where do you get your ideas from? Ah, well, now, um, they come from various places actually and, and the, the big boulders in the garden there, in actual fact, I, I see a photograph of David Stevenson's garden. I noticed he used them so I'm afraid I nicked a little bit of his. Um, <laughs> There. And uh, of course, uh, Capel Manor is just round the corner from us, and uh, we had a look there for some for some um, ideas. And some of the ideas were just something I wanted to do myself. You know, um, I, I wanted to get away from straight lines, which I think most people do. And I, I thought that just having curves and something possibly interesting round every corner, you know, rather than being able to see it all in one. So I thought we'd have a We'll have a try at that. Von der Vassilocker of Arnus Road, New Southgate, came second overall and achieved this spectacular garden even with a broken arm. at Southgate Fire Station have every reason to be proud of their efforts. Winners of the best public building category, the men of Greenwatch used the time when they were not firefighting to great effect. Shortly after hearing of their success they were visited by Walter Hart, one of the judges of both the Enfield and the London in Bloom competitions. And they were informed that they had also won the London Garden Society competition. In many cases, some of the other buildings have been older buildings that have lent to the design of the flowers and the colour schemes. But this has been a much more challenging 
problem that they've overcome very successfully and we must bear in mind that they are amateur gardeners and they've put a lot of thought and effort and time into creating this very, very delightful scene which will give colour till the end of the growing season. Here at Auckland Close, the winners of the best domestic frontage category show how even the smallest area can be aglow with colour. You don't need a garden to enter the competition. As well as individual efforts, prizes are awarded to residential streets, encouraging neighbours to work together to produce a special display. For several years, the top prize of this category has been scooped by the keen gardeners of Primrose Avenue. The winners of the best public house competition, The Moon Underwater, have made imaginative use of hanging baskets. Despite a lack of space in any kind of conventional garden, publicans Karen Vance and Andy Wilson have created a really special display which carried off first prize in their section. How do you feel about winning? Feel about it. uh, absolutely ecstatic. <laughs> We've, we've put a lot of hard work into the purple, we're very pleased with the result. Um, our gardener Peter Holding and his crew have worked very hard. Um, we were determined to win it this year and we have, so we're very happy about it. Where do you get your ideas from? We've, we took a lot of interest in the Jolly Farmer this year, you know, watching step by step what they were doing. And we decided we were going to go one better, for as much as we could. We don't have as much space, but what we've got, we tried hard. Obviously we don't just do it for ourselves, but it's also for our customers and for the local residents that live around here as well. To make sure the place looks nice. What do you think of the moon underwater? As I pass here quite, quite a bit and it's, you stop and smell them and look at them and uh, it gives you a lot of satisfaction to see them like that. It's, it's beautiful. Yes, it, it's marvellous. I've been admiring it before, but uh, you know, it wasn't as nice as it is now. It's really lovely. The Jolly Farmers, previous winner of the competition, also came third in the London in Bloom competition. Of course you would expect a florist shop to look colourful, but Paula Wyatt, owner of Paula's Petals in Gordon Hill and winner of the Best Shopfront competition, has really gone to town. Paula, how do you feel about winning the competition? And we're really thrilled because it's a lot of hard work that's been put into it. But we like to keep this top of the hill, you know, to make it look attractive for all the customers. And, you know, many people come up and see it, see it, and they say it's a joy to see such a lovely lot of variety. So it makes the area pleasant to look at. What do you think of Paula's petals? Well, I notice it every time I go past. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Really nice. Nicholas House, a winner of the Best Business Frontage Competition. Just Jobs Staff Agency achieved a second place in the business category. My name's Graham Martin, I'm the principal of a local recruitment agency, Just Jobs and Enfield. We got involved in the Enfield and Bloom scheme last year when I was collared by Ann Tot at the Capel Manor exhibition. Uh, we were looking at the display and we've got an office with a little front garden in Jennison Terrace in the heart of Enfield and we decided that we'd have a go. So we decked it out last year with some annuals and marigolds and petunias and impatiens and we managed to come third, which was, uh, which was last year. Uh, this year we actually entered again and unfortunately only fared just as well again but maybe next year we're going to try a little bit harder and maybe come second or first. Chesterfield Infant School got a first in the school grounds category. They won by a lot of hard work by teachers, pupils and parents. I'm Shirley McVitie, uh, Chesterfield Infant School. Uh, we were so um, disappointed in the state of the playground, there was nothing here for the children at all. And so we decided to brighten it up with some plants and we tried to get the PTA involved. Uh, they gave us some money to start us off. Um, we bought plants and shrubs and tried to make it a little more attractive. We've still got a few more plans yet, I hope next year we'll have a few more things out here. 
The best communal gardens class was won by the residents of Ingleborough, Cavell Drive. I'm, I'm John Mason, a resident on the estate, and the gardens have been here for about four to four and a half years, and I thought it would be, be a good idea if we entered it in the Enter the Bloom competition. It's, it's nice, for, it's nice for, for the residents who have visitors that come to see them. They get pleasure out of seeing it as well. And it's nice, yeah. It's nice for them to, you know, when they sit in the grounds, it's, it's lovely right, for them. Yeah. The campaign is largely financed by sponsorship, and the major sponsor of the campaign is Marks and Spencers. The manager, Terry Davies, is a keen supporter of the scheme. Marks and Spencers has a community involvement budget in excess of £5 million pounds in the current financial year. This budget is devolved to stores for them to involve themselves in their own local community in which we trade. The Enfield in Bloom competition we see as very much in line with the company's community involvement projects. Um, awarding prizes to improve the borough and the look of the borough and the environment of the borough we see very much as something we in Marks and Spencers, particularly in Enfield, would want to be involved in. A reception to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Enfield in Bloom with an anniversary cake. It was cut by the Mayor, Councillor Doreen Marden, Councillor Clive Goldwater, Chairman of Leisure Services, Terry Davies, and the Chairman of Enfield in Bloom, Mr Eric Morton. The winner of the children's painting competition received their prizes. Helen Mitchell from Hadley Woodland. Another autumn season of bulb planting starts with the assistance of the ground force volunteers and members of the Enfield in Bloom committee including Terry Davies, manager of Marks and Spencer. Throughout the campaign's history, it has enjoyed the wholehearted support of a succession of Enfield mayors who regularly attend launches, make presentations and promote the project wherever they can. Less visible but no less important is the work of the Enfield in Bloom committee. Dedicated to making the campaign ever more successful, these volunteers come up with ideas to make Enfield bloom and then raise the funds to realise them. <laughs> I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to thank the Enfield in Bloom team and in particular Anne Tot and of course all the ground force and the volunteers together with the sponsors and our main sponsors Marks and Spencers for making Enfield so beautiful and I'm looking forward to the spring to see the results of their very hard work. <laughs>